Hello friends, today we are going to discuss E2 reaction in cyclohexane derivatives. In the previous lecture, we have learned that for the E2 reaction, leaving group X must be antiperiplanar to be dihydrogen. In cyclohexane system, this is possible only when X and beta hydrogen both are at axial position. Suppose we have a monosubstituted cyclohexane with leaving group X. In more stable chair conformation, X is at equatorial position. In this conformation, Cx is antiperiplanar to Cc bond. So, the E2 reaction will not occur in this conformation. In contrast, in less stable chair conformation, X is axial and there is one axial proton on each beta carbon. Here, X is antiperiplanar to the beta hydrogen. In the presence of a base, this conformation undergoes E2 elimination like this to produce cyclohexene. With the progress of E2 reaction to maintain the equilibrium, conformation with equatorial X is continuously getting converted to the conformation with axial X. This process continues till all the substrate gets converted to alkene. Now let's discuss E2 reaction in 1,2 disubstituted cyclohexane. Suppose we have to predict the structure of E2 product of trans 1-bromo-2-methyl cyclohexane. The chair conformation of this molecule can be drawn like this where bromine and methyl groups are at axial position. Label this conformation as A. The another conformation can be drawn like this where bromine and methyl groups are at equatorial position. Label this conformation as B. Conformation A is less stable than B because of 1,3 diaxial interactions. We know that for the elimination to occur, leaving group must be axial and there must be a beta hydrogen. Conformation B has leaving group at equatorial position, so it will not take part in elimination. In conformation A, bromine is at axial position, so it can take part in elimination. These are the two beta carbons. This beta carbon has axial hydrogen. So, in the presence of a base like ethoxide ion, Elimination will occur like this to produce 3-methyl cyclohexene. Now let's have cis 1-bromo-2-methyl cyclohexane. We can draw the two chair conformations A and B in equilibrium with each other. In conformation B, leaving group bromine is equatorial. So, B will not take part in elimination, while in conformation A, bromine is axial and there are two beta hydrogens, H2 and H6. So, there will be two elimination products. Abstraction of H6 will give product P1, while Abstraction of H2 will give product P2 since P2 is a greater substituted alkene than P1. So, according to the set jep rule, P2 will be the major while P1 minor product. Based on the stability of conformation of cyclohexane derivative involved in elimination, we can predict the relative rate of E2 reaction of two diastereomeric cyclohexane derivatives. For example, if someone asks which of the two diastereomers of 1-bromo-4-terbutyl cyclohexane, cis and trans will react faster with ethoxide N. For comparing rate of elimination, we will first make more stable confirmation of cis and trans isomers. Since Third butyl group is very bulky group, so in more stable chair conformation, it will be at equatorial position. 
So, the more stable chair conformation of cis isomer can be drawn like this. Here, we can see that third butyl group is at equatorial position and bromine is at axial position. This is the required conformation for the elimination reaction since bromine is at axial position. There are two axial beta hydrogens. Both are equivalent. Elimination of this proton will give S alkene while elimination of this will give R alkene. So there will be an enantiomeric mixture of R and S alkenes. The more stable conformation of trans isomer will look like this where third butyl and bromine both are at equatorial position. But this conformation will not give E2 product as it has bromine at equatorial position. Ring flipping can generate a conformation with axial bromine. Here, in this case too, there are two equivalents of axial beta hydrogens. It will also produce an enantiomeric mixture of two E2 products. If we compare the stability of conformation involved in E2 reaction, we will find that the conformation of trans isomer required for E2 reaction is very unstable because it has very bulky third butyl group at axial position while conformation of cis isomer involved in E2 reaction is stable because it has third butyl group at equatorial position. So the rate of elimination in cis isomer will be fast while that in trans isomer will be very slow. That's all in this video. Please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon if you like this video. Thank you very much.